All right, hello everyone. It is October 31st, Halloween. I just got back from work, but um, I wanted to make this video and I don't remember if this was something I was going to talk about anyways, or if I just forgot about, forgot about it. But um, I watch a lot of apologists videos if you don't want know what an apologist is it's pretty much people who defend um their beliefs their religion through like logic and rational arguments so one of my favorite youtube channels on here also sorry i'm wearing um cat <laughs> themed makeup because i dressed up for work today um, anyways, um, basically I watch this channel called Daily Dose of Wisdom and a lot of the videos they talk about are of that nature. It's like, you know, conversations people have about God. Um, a lot of it is, it, I mean, it is a Christian based channel and a lot of the videos that he shares on there are basically talking about like, atheistic worldview versus christian worldview so i'm always talking about things more on a macro level than like individualistic because i always think more broad versus you know i mean at the end of the day every individual person is going to be different so it's no point in arguing about one individual person's thoughts or feelings i always look at the bigger picture overarching overarching theme so basically the argument a really strong argument i feel like christians have is objective morality and that is something i feel like that i touched based on but not fully and basically, objective versus subjective morality is one of the major arguments within apologetics, especially for an atheistic worldview versus a Christian or religious worldview. Now, I specifically say Christian because I cannot argue from any other religion standpoint because I am Christian. I, what's it called? Um identify as a christian i am not well versed in any other religions so i can and i don't believe all religions are the same all religions don't believe the same thing so you have there's a lot of religions out there right and they all don't believe the same things so i can only speak from my personal perspective as a christian so basically when it comes to morals you know christians believe in objective morals and an objective moral is basically something is always wrong or something is always right there's not the sometimes this is okay and sometimes this is wrong and so there are objectively defined morals that you can find in the bible it's not you know this is sometimes okay depending on this circumstances it's this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong thou shall not don't do this don't do that don't do right so the bible has objective morals and as a christian i believe these morals come from god directly right so i believe these are morals that god created if you believe in god that means God, and I, I also think too, maybe it's hard for someone who's not a Christian to understand it because if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in the greatness of God and you don't believe in the righteousness of God. So it's just like how I view God as a Christian is not going to be how an atheist views God because they don't believe in God. And the most of the time they don't believe in God because their ideas are of God are not you know I and this is just this is my personal opinion this is how I feel I've noticed that a lot of atheists have an idea of God that is not actually the God that Christians believe in 
like they have ideas that god is you know this mean person who just wants to punish a lot of atheists character um, try to characterize god as being evil or having you know you know bad intentions or not caring it's just like i mean i've seen a lot of atheists argue pretty much make arguments that characterize and it's like a lot of atheists have this idea that they're better than god in a lot of ways because i say this as an uh, uh based off of what i've observed so a lot of times they will have this idea of god being you know like a totalitarian ruler who's forcing things on people and doing things and like oh well god allows all the evil and all this evil and suffering and problems and i think i addressed the problem of suffering already so go watch that video because biblically speaking god already solved the issue of suffering like if you don't believe or want the solution he gave that's one thing if you reject it but god solved the problem suffering is not an issue to me as a christian because god solved it already but anyways there's a lot of atheists in my opinion especially watching like different apologist videos it seems like they have this you know idea of god that is not actually who god is and it's not what people who actually believe in god believe god is like you don't believe in god but your idea of god is also not who god actually is so anyways um god in the bible is holy righteous perfect all-knowing all-powerful basically just greater greater than anything that we as humans can actually imagine so i don't believe in a god that fits in this box i believe in a god that is greater than what i can even actually imagine god to be and i also think too i love watching people's testimonies and hearing people's stories of you know their personal i'm like you're, there's nothing more powerful than your testimony at the end of the day but hearing people's you know testimonies of encounters with god and things like that are one of the most beautiful things that i feel like i love watching as a christian and seeing how god steps in to help people when they're at their lowest when they're at their breaking point whatever like you know there's so many amazing beautiful testimonies on youtube that show god as being loving as being someone who cares as being someone who's there for people when they're at their lowest and at their worst and i think for people who've mischaracterized who god is and have this you know false perception of god being all of these bad things it's hard maybe to hear the other side of it but anyways i'm getting a little off topic because this is about the argument of objective versus subjective morals and i think this is something that a lot of atheists struggle with because the idea that morals are objective pretty much atheists have to reject for their worldview and here's why objective morals point to god at the end of the day and i think that's why atheists a lot of atheists who are in a, a part of apologetics don't try to argue the an idea of objective morals and there was a video i responded to recently where pretty much the person who was trying to argue with a well-known apologist named frank turek he actually spoke at my church i want to say earlier this year over the summer which is really cool i should have gone to his um he did do like a actual like speak speak at it but i missed it um, but he was like a guest speaker at my church and I see his videos all the time. He's very smart, very wise. Um, he makes so many great points. So anyways, it was Alex something. 
and Frank Turek. And basically, um, you know, the topic of basically morality came up. And Frank Turek was trying to reason with Alex about this. He was like, like, okay. And this is where I have to just be like, I think a lot of atheists sometimes have to be intellectually dishonest in order to uphold their worldview as an atheist because it's like it's a gotcha moment but it's like they don't want to admit it so basically Frank Turek is saying I would say that rape is always wrong you know is an objective moral and basically or something along that lines and Alex from his atheistic standpoint could not um agree to that objective moral standard because again if he was to assert that there was such thing as an objective moral and he can't say as an atheist how where that objective moral comes from as an atheist you don't have a it's like and i think this is where i think a lot of people don't maybe understand the atheist worldview does not have answers to a lot of things that we know and understand because we are spiritual beings but atheism doesn't answer spiritual questions it can't it's very um atheism is pretty much limited to almost i want to say a naturalistic worldview which is all basically science science can't prove spirituality science can't prove a lot of things so and i made a video how science is limited science is limited to what exists naturally what occurs naturally but i think the problem with it is life is much more than just you know what you can measure scientifically it's like love you can't measure love scientifically yet love is probably one of the most powerful emotions right is love an emotion i think that's also going to be another topic um because i mean just about every emotion you can think of it's like emotions are powerful things and they don't make sense they are not scientifically proven <sighs> anyways let me get back to the topic so this idea of objective morals a lot of atheists atheists have to reject objective mor mor morals because there's no way to prove a moral being objective from an atheist worldview because an objective moral means we didn't create it that humans didn't create it and it's just like this idea that <sighs> I don't even know it just goes so much deeper than it than what I can even actually say because we all have them everyone has a in reality everyone has a moral compass I believe every person has morals at the end of the day um and those morals and this is where i feel like this is why the bible is always true god says he wrote the laws on our hearts so there is not one person who doesn't have morals compass or isn't aware of when they're doing something wrong or when they're doing something right because god said i wrote the i wrote my laws on their hearts so no one has an excuse for saying you know well i didn't know it was wrong However, <clears throat> that's from a, what's it called? An objective moral standpoint, right? I believe morals are objective. I believe that people often do things that go against their own morals on a daily basis. You know, you might know that you're doing something you wouldn't want someone to do to you, but you do it anyways. You know, we are flawed individuals not one human being on the planet is perfect we're gonna make mistakes we're gonna do things that hurt people that's why we always have to forgive others but 
I think it just goes to show even the morals and this is what I'm saying I believe in objective morals so this is not a question this is not something I'm questioning because I believe morals are objective there are things that are always wrong there are things that are always right it's never wrong to help someone when they're in need right at least in my opinion but then when you have a subjective moral when you believe in subjective morals essentially and that's what atheists argue are subjective morals that leaves it up to each individual person essentially to decide what is and what isn't morals and then it's also like well who is deciding and it's like if you decide for yourself what isn't isn't moral if morals aren't objective then a person can say well according to what i think this is okay killing people's okay that's a moral that actually exists i want to say in our current world view um but anyways you know there's a lot of it's like in the subjective morals are pretty much just any people doing whatever they think or feel is right and you can't tell someone it's wrong because we don't have defined objective morals now religion is what kept these objective morals around and i don't think a lot of people realize that they have to borrow from religion's objective morals to have the morals that they have a lot of the moral standards people stand on were backed by christian values were backed by a religion even the laws that exist in the united states were backed by the laws of the bible so it's like the idea that it's wrong to do certain things comes from religion it doesn't come from it came from religious people at the end of the day a lot of the morals and standards people have are borrowed from religious people's ideas and concepts that came from the bible so when people think that you know they just have these morals and they just have them automatically it's just like well yes and no now like i said earlier according to the bible god wrote the laws on everyone's hearts so if you believe the bible that means everyone has morals because god gave everyone morals he said you have a way of knowing when you do something right you know when you do something wrong when you feel guilty right why would you feel guilty about something if you didn't do something wrong and i felt guilt before i've done things that i knew were wrong and did them anyways right so it's just like the way if i can feel guilty about something that means there's a part of my consciousness that understands i did something wrong and I think just about everyone has a moral compass, right? So it's just like we argue as an atheist, you argue that that doesn't exist. But as a human being, we're all aware of our own moral compass existing and our own thoughts. Now, when I it comes down to like what makes someone a good person, that I think is where I think i say you know if i'm defining what makes someone a good person according to that is that i feel like is where it's like religion your religion is either going to define it or you are going to define it for yourself now what you believe or think is wrong you know that moral compass exists exists in every person but when it comes down to what you believe makes you a good person as a christian that is defined in the bible but the hard part about that is the bible says well none of us nobody is good basically it says no one's perfect we all fall short we all are sinners you know the bible basically says none of y'all are nobody's good enough no one is actually a good person according to the bible and i think that's not something most people would want to believe and that's why when i say like being a christian is basically living your life 
knowing you're not good enough. <laughs> Or knowing you're just not perfect. And it's just like, I say this laughing, but it's just like, I don't have a perception of myself as being better than I actually am. It's like, you definitely have to be humble. You have to be aware that you're not a perfect human being. And I think for someone who, and I think that's hard for a lot of people to maybe admit because I would I would assume or argue most people are going to say they're a good person most people don't want to see themselves as not being a good person or as being a horrible person or as being you know they want to see they want to say I'm a decent person I'm a decent human being but unfortunately I think that is often the reason that people reject the idea of God as well because the Bible tells people you aren't perfect you aren't good <laughs> you aren't all of like these things that people want to feel that they are but I think that is really more about pride than anything um it's hard to admit when you're wrong a lot of times I struggle admitting I'm wrong a lot of time. Well, I shouldn't say a lot of times because I'd be on here being like, I did this. <laughs> I did that. You know, I know I'm not perfect. I'm not sitting here like, um, you know, I'm not on some high horse personally. I don't think I'm better than anyone. I don't see myself as being, you know, just you know, I'm flawed. I'm a flawed human being. I, I've i accepted it. I know I'm not perfect. I know there is a lot I am always going to have to work on, that there's things I can work towards being better. But that's more like you get to that from uh, being humble and humility in a lot of ways. And I think that's why there's like a um sermon in the bible about that as well it's just basically like god or what what analogy did it use the bible is full of so much wisdom um but basically the analogy that was used was you know if so there's two people and one has a debt of a million dollars one has a debt of like a thousand dollars and the person forgives both debts. He was like, who do you think loves me more? Who do you think is more grateful um, of their debts being forgiven? The person with a thousand who only owed a thousand or the person who owed a million dollars? And they say, well, obviously the person who owed more is going to be more grateful for that. And so the analogy that that is represented represents is sin. So when you sin, you know, everyone sins, everyone falls short. We, we are all human. We all make mistakes. No one's perfect. And that's okay because Jesus was and he paid the price for our sins so that no one has to perish. Anyways, the person who had, you know, the less sins, who only had a thousand sins that Jesus forgives, that God forgave them for, you know, who who he loves Jesus right but the person who had millions of sins that Jesus died for and paid the price for they probably love him even more so basically it's just like the more sins the more fallen the more debt that you owe when the more you appreciate God and the more you love God and the more you're grateful for him then the person who you know maybe didn't have as much sin on their plate, didn't have as much specs, you know? It's basically was just saying, you know, the person who a lot of people would view as being the least, like, oh, this person is the worst type of person in the world. They have this, they've been to jail, they've been arrested, all of these things, you know, that people would look down on. 
in our current world and say, you know, they're not a good person because they did all of these horrible things. According to God, when he forgives that person of their sins, they love him more, even more than the person who maybe only had, you know. And I mean, how many sins does a person have in their lifetime? Who knows? Only God knows. But anyways, that is basically the analogy of, you know... The person whose sin has greater sin often has more love and appreciation for Jesus because they had Jesus forgave a lot more for that person. And in the same way, it's just like when someone thinks, you know, they're perfect or when someone has this idea that they're not as bad as someone or, you know, I might have done this, but I didn't do as much stuff as that person does. And then they see someone who seems like they should, you know, excuse me. This is why I say you don't judge. Don't judge people because, you know, I love seeing testimonies of people who've gone through, you know, way worse things than I myself have you know, just show how much great, greater, great, grateful they are for Jesus and how much more love and appreciation they have for God. So it's just like, don't take for granted, basically, anything. But also, you know, someone who's God's forgiven for way more than you often has a much better understanding of the grace and love and mercy that God gives to people freely when they ask for it anyways this kind of got off topic where was I going okay yeah so objective morals or subjective morals are pretty much what a atheistic person has to believe in because an objective moral points to God like if we can say something objectively is wrong it's like where where would that idea come from if you know we're just evolved human beings like why would it across the board there be an objective moral and honestly I really just want to say it's hard for me to really understand um understand actually yes understand an atheistic worldview because i believe in god so it's like i can't pick under well i didn't want to say i try my best to understand certain things but i really can't put myself in a headspace of you know god doesn't exist because i believe in god and I think that's true on the opposite end. Like someone who doesn't believe in God, I feel like can only understand. It's just like there's, you can um, listen. You can um, understand where people are coming from. But it's just like I can't put myself in a headspace of not believing in God when I believe in God like I don't know what it feels like to not believe in God because I believe in God so it's just I don't know uh, but anyways believing in God is believing in I don't know I think like in other videos I've talked about it God honestly just makes the more most sense to me from a logical and rational standpoint, like if I had to choose to believe that the w world was created by an intelligent, all-knowing being who is infinite and capable of creating the universe and all things in it, that's a really powerful God to believe in. But on the opposite end, I could just believe everything exists out of random from nothing and nowhere and that doesn't really give me much hope for anything. I feel like it leads to a very nihil nihilist, am I saying that? Nihilist worldview that nothing matters because nothing really does matter. If after you die, it's just you're dead. If all we have in this life 
is this life it's just like think about all of the things that are unfair all of the things that are unjust i refuse to believe that this world is the only thing that exists and that when we die nothing we did in our life matters we're just dead in the ground decomposed by bacteria and that's it like you lived and like what's the greatest thing you can accomplish I don't know I can't put myself in that worldview because it really just does lead to you just believing like everything is meaningless nothing really matters and I don't want to I don't want to believe that and what I'm saying, and I hope people don't take this the wrong way, because I'm saying this from a perspective of, you know, yes, people can define life for themselves. Well, I think the mean, like they can define the meaning of life for themselves. They can say, well, I think, you know, my family and friends and everything else, they give my life meaning and whatever. I <laughs> I think that's where sometimes I have trouble explaining myself fully. But basically, it's just like you can define the meaning of life for yourself as an atheist. But I also think, too, when I just think about it in the bigger picture, it's just like, there's millions of people who lived before me, right? Who died. Who was their impact on? I don't know. I just feel like God gives everything more meaning and purpose. And it makes life, in my opinion, make much more sense. Like, I don't know. A world without God to me is just a world where... You just have all of this unfair, you know, injustice, horrible things happening, evil people get away with doing bad things. And actually, without God, does evil exist? Like, those are, there's so many other questions I feel like that come out of it. Like, good and evil technically don't exist in an atheistic worldview. However, it's like arguing that as an atheist is really hard to do, I think. And it's just like, oh, well, we're just going to say it's all because if society, if all of society at some point agrees that something is wrong, that's how we get an objective moral. But then that also means, well, if everyone it's not objective still, because it's like if it's based off of just everyone believing something's okay. Is it actually okay? Like, if everyone believes murder is okay, is murder actually okay? You know? It's just, like, bigger, bigger, bigger picture me. How I think bigger picture is just, like, it's like something is wrong whether I believe it's wrong or not. That's what makes something objective. And you have to believe in objectiveness and truth. Like, if you don't believe truth exists, there's no point in arguing about anything. If you don't believe in objective truth, that there's things that are always going to be true, whether I'm alive to understand it or not. And I feel like some atheists, basically just going back to this video that Alex and Frank Turk did, because I remember when it came to, like to that math question that I thought was so stupid that someone could would argue. Basically, you know, huh, math is another is another um problem, I think, in atheist worldview because math exists is a language that we discover. Math is discovered. But math, if math is discovered, it's not created by humans. That means it it exists outside of human understanding. And that's a problem for atheist worldview. And so basically, Alex had made the comment, well, <laughs> you can't, math, math is, um, was created 
math only exists because humans can understand it which i also think is just like um I, that's not how it works but also you know whether or not we could understand math or not it existed because we discover the mathematical equations that exist like we discover the mathematical laws we're not creating them, we're discovering them, which means they existed outside of uh, us being able to understand it is not what made math hap exist or come to exist. So it just all, again, points to, these are all pretty much huge concepts in apologetics that people debate about because, you know, they're very strong, strongly support basically god but um i can't remember the exact comment he said but basically it's just like well what is two what is two like what you say is two i'm like it doesn't matter if we called something two or we call something five it's just like the name that we define something does not change what is being defined it's just like language what language defines it's like whether you say uno or one it means the same thing it's just like he pretty much was trying to make an argument like oh well what does two mean it's just like well the def definitively what something what a word defines does not change its meaning right or does not change what it is it's just like language is our way of communicating things to people but language is our is different ways of saying the same thing it's just like the name or word we call it doesn't change its meaning or what's being defined and that's kind of like where he was going with it which i thought was really like dumb it's almost just like you know is a book not a book because we call it we decided it it's just like the names that we gave give to things does not change the things what the things actually are at the end of the day it's like we could have anything could have language language is a whole nother thing argument you could get into but it's just like whether we called this jacket something else it still defines what this is right like the language doesn't change the meaning of the word of the meaning of what something is but anyways absolute absolute truth objective truth that is kind of like one of the biggest i think things like if you don't believe in objective truth living in a very subjective you know well each person gets to define what is and isn't right and each person gets to decide what is and it's just like it's there's no a world without objectiveness fails to have meaning in a lot of ways because you can't have everything can't be true at the end of the day and so if everyone's just living according to their individual you know thoughts or feelings it's just like a world full of people whose main focus is just themselves and I think that's kind that's basically what I was getting at in some other videos I made but I think it's from an overarching idea it's the overarching concept i'm getting at like if there is no objective truth if everything that exists is subjective you know i can't tell you something's wrong objectively using the bible and that is kind of i do feel like unfortunately what it seems like <coughs> the world is pushing towards subjectiveness subjective truth well just because you don't like something just because you believe something's wrong doesn't mean it's wrong or just because you think this is not okay doesn't mean it's okay and it really has just become you know 
whatever's popular, whatever is pushed in the media, whatever we define as being okay is now what people say is okay. But objective morals are the backbone of a lot of societal norms. And if we get rid of the backbone of those things it's going to dismantle a lot of things and it's slowly starting to unravel but it's going to get worse basically the more people are leaning and pushing towards subjective values and subjective truth well what's okay for me it like what's it what's it's okay if i do something because i believe it's okay but you know you don't have to do what i'm doing like this idea that we can have subjectiveness in laws is actually not really good but that's a whole nother story anyways i feel like i am kind of rambling now the main thing was just, again, I think it's really, I feel like morals are a really big part. Or it's like a really, it's something people don't really think about, maybe. It's like, where do where do morals come from? Where do your morals come from? And I don't struggle with that because, again, I believe the Bible and I believe in God. But I feel like if you don't believe in those things, that's something that you have to really think about, I think, in a lot of ways. Like, where do the morals... I don't know. I think people don't realize how much they borrow from Christian values, though. How much the world depends on, you know, Christian values to have like some of the freedoms that people have. I think Jordan Peterson made a really good um, video talking about it, uh, talking about, you know, that, how like Christianity and the Bible hold a lot of objective moral stances that a lot of um, societies, like laws are built around. And without that, without the Bible, it's like you have to, it's like you have to believe in God to understand like the severity of those laws. And when you stop believing in God and you stop believing in objective morals, you get to a point in society where it's just like every man for himself and it's just like everyone is defining what is good and what is evil according to their own their own ideas and that's how we get hitlers and that's how we get you know slavery and that's how we get a lot of the evil things that are the things that we would say were evil things that happened in the past, genocides, all of those things. It's like, how do we get those things? And it's like, you won't, you can't say genocide is, well, genocide isn't always wrong. Sometimes genocide's okay. If it's, you know, people doing evil things. And I think that's one thing I feel like people don't understand about the Bible because God, a lot of the Old Testament is God punishing evil. And when God is punishing evil, there's people reading the Bible saying, oh, God's committing genocide. It's like, no, these people were doing all of these evil things and then God punished them for that. And he erased, <laughs> he erased certain civilizations. But when we go to war and we're fighting for our freedoms and, you know, I don't know. It's just like, again justice often requires some sort of punishment you know when you are fighting for justice if there's someone who's murdered many people and you want that person to face justice you know justice is not always doesn't always 
happen, right? You know, if one person has taken many lives, that person only has one life. And taking away that one life does not bring back the many lives that person took. So it's just like, what is, how do you actually define justice in that type of situation? Um, okay, I'm getting lost in other things. Okay, I think that's all I have to say for now. I need a nap. I'm tired. And yeah, that's my thoughts for the day. Bye, guys.